Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. Welcome to the hands on session of WebG start. In today's session Dr. Bing Jiang will teach you about how the results and job summary can give you useful information. He will also show you how the enrichment analysis can be visualized in different forms. He will discuss about different types of network based methods like direct neighbor based approach, module based approach or diffusion based approach. So, let us welcome Dr. Bing Jiang for today's hands on session on WebG start. Ghost name summary. So, this is uh, not uh, first, this is not enrichment analysis. Do not use uh, this uh, to report as your enrichment analysis. This is just simply a classification of the genes you submitted based on some. Uh, pre selected uh, biological process, uh, cellular component, and uh, molecular function categories give you an idea of how many, for example, how many genes are uh, related to biological regulation and metabolic uh, process or response to stimulus. These are the high level categories, yeah. Well, again, that's uh, I think <laughs> you are very good representative of the users. We got this request from a lot of users, so yeah, that's on our to-do list um, to add to. Yeah, we will we will do that in the uh, 2019 release. Um, and it's just basically uh, similar to the pie chart you typically see. I mean, to classify genes, um, and then uh, the important part is this enrichment results. Uh, Let us do not do the redundancy reduction yet and then uh, the uh, default view is a bar chart. So, basically this shows you the enriched categories because we choose the uh, top 10 options that is why we get the 10 uh, categories here right. And on the y axis you have the enrichment ratio um, from the uh, uh, Fisher's analysis um, and then you can uh, th this one can be downloaded if you right click and then you can download this as PNG or SVG for your presentation or for um, even for publication I think the quality is good enough. Or you want to maybe visualize in another way uh, you can visualize all your results in a volcano plot like this and then you see these are the goal terms highlighted the top 10 uh, categories. Uh, you also have the option to change it. Um, you change can change the label from the gene set name uh, like the gene ontology which you do not understand what it is to something is more descriptive like the description of the gene ontology terms. If you do not have this volcano plot then you are still using the old version probably. Um, uh, so, you have to go to the website and uh, if you the old website is like this um, and uh, you have to use the webcast 2019 beta version or you just uh, put the uh, 2019 in your URL. Um, yeah, next this is a uh, completely new feature. Um, so, um, and the programmer also did a very nice job uh, as you can see because these labels are crowded and uh, sometimes you will not be able to see right. Uh, but the good thing is you can actually use your mouse to move this around to move this to the right place that you want it to be. And uh, of course, now it is difficult to see where it is where you can draw the link and then uh, basically you can rearrange them in the way that it can be used for publication. Uh, uh, click on the draw uh, link. Yeah, and the yeah, the axis is the log two of enrichment ratio. Uh, so basically, this is you have uh, expected the number of genes, right? Uh, if you do random sampling, and then if you have an enrichment, uh, what is the enrichment ratio? This is this, and then the y-axis is uh, FDR. Uh, in the log scale. But after you move this around 
you can see um, now you basically have a very nice view of everything. You can keep the link or you can remove the link um, to get a clean view. Uh, and then you can download this product um, that is very uh, uh, yeah minus log FDR. Yeah, yeah. So the the smaller will end up with the higher. Yeah. So this is a deck uh, volcano view, and then you can also do the deck view because these genes are organized in uh, directed uh, cyclic graph in gene ontology. You can actually see this as well, but this is available in the old version as well. And from any of this. Um, and sometimes if you end up with too many uh, categories, some of these are quite redundant as you can see in Go, right. Um, they ha it has this hierarchical structure, I mean the parent term and the child term. Um, so, you want to simplify this and uh, for example, uh, you can do the affinity propagation based simplification. Let us look at this. Uh, if you let us do a bar chart, you originally have um, ten, uh, 10 significant terms, but if you do the affinity propagation, you end up with 3. That means, this will group the uh, 10 terms into basically 3 clusters and only pick one from each as a representative that will simplify your interpretation. And uh, another algorithm we implemented is the weight set, weighted set cover, this end up with 4. Uh, either of this is useful for you to simplify your uh, for 10 I mean it is not a problem at all, but you can imagine when you have 200 and uh, this would be a very useful feature to uh, look at. And now, we have the overview of the results and you can download and save, uh, but of course, you want to uh, understand why this is enriched right. You want to look at the detailed result. You can click on any of this bar that will show you the detailed results for that bar at the bottom, uh, bottom part of this. For example, um, this shows the apoptotic process uh, and then uh, you can click on this, it is linked to the database uh, 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 amigo. So, this will give you a description of what is a prototypic process and then here you have the FDR result, the p value before the adjustment and then you have the gene set size, you have the expected value and the overlap uh, overlap the number, uh, uh, number of genes and the e enrichment ratio. So, basically the enrichment ratio is the overlap divided by the expected and then you have uh, also very uh, easily understandable Venn diagram to help you to understand this result and then all the genes in overlapping genes here are uh, 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 in this table you can browse all the genes. Um, and you can also sort them uh, in different ways. So, um, yeah and then let us say uh, you did this analysis and you want to share with your colleagues or if you want to share with your uh, 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 supervisor, uh, he just does not have time to run this analysis. So, and then you can click on the result download. So, this will save the result as a zip file. If you open this zip file, it will include the HTML file and other files. And if you click on that HTML file, uh, that will basically reproduce this exact result. So, it uh, also provides a very easy way to share your results with others. So, yeah, it is very simple like this, um, but uh, you can explore this in many different ways. And you can go back and then change the. Uh, let us say uh, we did the analysis against the biological process, right. Now we want to do pathway, let us say we do uh, change the uh, functional database to pathway type, and then we use a wiki pathway uh, for the analysis. And uh, maybe we change the cutoff from the top 10 to FDR 0.05. Uh, so, and then you can submit. So, basically this will compare your gene list with all the uh, wiki pathways. Um, let us see what we get. I am using uh, wiki pathway as a demo. Yeah, you can choose uh, rectum if you want or uh, CAG, but uh, yeah, um, 
I'm I'm using wiki pathway here. FDR, yeah, I, I think uh, you can uh, do 0 0.05, for example, yeah, it's up, yes, yeah, uh, but uh, you only, I mean, uh, you can, uh, uh, you, uh, you can do up to point, uh, some people use 25 percent, point two five. that's the largest I think you can go, yeah, but uh, I think uh, you only, you go with point zero five or point zero one. This is the result I got, so, um, Basically, it's very similar to the uh, um, um, gene ontology analysis, but of course, we don't have the DAG because I mean, uh, this is not gene ontology, so there is that uh, directed cyclic graph uh, structure anymore. Um, but you still have the volcano plot, and then uh, you can still put the description um, here. And now you can see because we have a lot of uh, enriched categories. So, it's more useful to apply the affinity propagation. For example, you have a lot, right, and it's difficult to go through and then uh, use affinity propagation or with uh, it will give you a reduced set that can represent, uh, basically highlight the representative ones and uh, uh, yeah, that will make your volcano plot easier to look at as well. And another difference between the, uh, this analysis and the gene ontology analysis is uh, for gene ontology, I mean, they just put genes together, but without defining the relationship between genes within that gene set, right. But here, I mean, and we can have the pathway map. Yeah, this is the result. So, but if you click on one of these pathways, I mean, and then if you click on the uh, pathway ID, it will also show you um, the overlapping genes here, there are six genes here, right, and uh, then you have the pathway map and the genes will be highlighted in the map. I do not know why only one is highlighted here, let us try another one, um, one second yeah, so the highlighted ones are like because sometimes one node might have represent a complex or something like that. There might be multiple genes um, in one node, but uh, this provides a very easy way that you have uh, not only have uh, the pathway identified, but also you know uh, where your genes are located on the pathway. And this highlighting function is available in all of the pathway analysis like CAG, uh, rectum or um, uh, uh, wiki pathway. So, that is the first example and uh, I think you can change the parameters in different ways. For example, we only look at the gene ontology biological process and the uh, wiki pathway uh, and the using a specific cutoff, but you are free to change those and uh, do your own analysis. But in the next example, and I want to show you how you can do the gene set enrichment analysis uh, in webgestalt and uh, specifically what we have here is a pre-rank based uh, analysis. Um, we do not do the differential analysis in the system, rather you do, you choose your statistical methods and uh, you do your uh, 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 differential analysis and after that you get a, a statistical p-value that will allow you to rank all the genes. In this case, um, for the ORA, as I said, let us see this, uh, if ORA, I mean, w the input is very simple, it is just a list of genes. So, that is basically you do a differential analysis or correlation analysis and you identify 100, 200 genes and then you copy paste here or you put that in a text file and upload here. But if you want to do GSEA, um, let us see, let us click on this GSEA sample run. Um, and what you need to have is something like this. You have every gene has a value associated with that gene. And in this case, for example, I, uh, this could be a P statistic or a minus log P value, uh, something like that. So, that will allow you to rank the genes. 
But notice this. I mean, in this case, you don't set any cutoff. If you do a proteomic study, uh, and then you identify 5,000 proteins, um, and then you have a p statistic for all the 5,000, you need to put all every single protein in this. But in this format, one one gene or one protein and the value. This and then the system will sort the genes and uh, identify the location of each gene um, for specific gene set where the genes are located in the ranked list. So, um, yeah, because of the uh, time, let's just do the GSEA sample run. I think that will be easier than getting the file and upload. But when you prepare your file, it's basically uh, same as this, just uh, a file, text file with two columns. Uh, remember for ORA, it's just one column or just the gene list. GSEA always, uh, ha you have to have a gene and a value from your statistical test. For example, you can calculate the correlation um, of the genes to drug sensitivity and then for each of those you have a Pearson's correlation and then you can use that to rank all the genes. So, um, this is a, a, if you um, uh, succeed in getting the result, I mean the, the top part will be very similar to the ORA analysis. Basically, you still get the um, uh, bar chart of a kind of plot or if you do the go, you get the DAG of your G, uh, enriched uh, terms. Um, the major difference is here, I and mean, uh, rather than the, um, the Venn diagram that shows you the overlapping genes between your uploaded gene list and the uh, genes enriched gene set. For example, let's see if we are interested in this um, focal adhesion. We click on this, and then um, it's uh, you let's say this is a ranked list. This is the data you in, uh, of this is your input. So basically now because every gene uh, came with the value, then the system was able to rank all the genes from the largest value to the lowest value. Right here you can see this is ranked list metric. This is the number one gene, this is the last gene basically from the positive values to the negative values. And now for the focal adhesion genes, this bars basically represent wh where are the focal adhesion genes located on this ranked list. As we can see, um, there is a tendency for these genes to be located on this part rather than this part. Basically that means there are a lot more up-regulated focal adhesion genes than the, I mean, the very few down-regulated focal adhesion genes. That's why it's enriched at this part. Um, also, it has this scoring plot, enrichment score plot, and this part is the leading edge, meaning these are the genes uh, that give you the enrichment signal, and these are the genes that are listed in the uh, table at the bottom. Um, yeah, there are a total of 53 genes uh, out of the 128 genes that are in the leading edge that is giving you the enrichment signal. So, the, um, so basically, I mean, if you think about the uh, Venn diagram and this, uh, you can um, probably can help you better understand the difference between these two approaches. One approach you have a cutoff and then it becomes two sets and then you do the overlap and then you use a, a facial test or hypergeometric test to check the enrichment of the overlap. But here you are not setting a cutoff, then you get all the value, uh, values for all the genes and then you are testing the uh, enrichment um, in the ranked list. So, um, I think this is, uh, again, I mean, you can also, uh, at the top, uh, there is a download button and then you can also save and the download and then, uh, download and save and uh, share your results. So, uh, finally, I mean, let's take a look at the NTA sample run. 
So the NTA sample run, the input is also very simple. It's just an, again a list of genes. You are put, uh, let's say you have a list of differentially expressed genes or some um, genes you can just put here. The idea is to say, I mean, uh, if I identify, let's say we do a association study, we identify 300 genes that are potentially interesting. Which one should I test first, right? <coughs> do an experiment first. And uh, this will help you to answer that question. Um, so in, um, there are two options. One is to do network expansion, but the other is network retrieval and prioritization. Uh, this prioritization is when you have a lot of genes, you want to uh, pick the top and then you do this. But th this can also be used. Let's say I, I can show you an, uh, another example later. Let's say you have one gene, but you don't know the function of this gene. Then you can just type the name of the gene here. And then you can do the same analysis. That will help you to retrieve the neighborhood of that gene and then do uh, go enrichment analysis to help you to predict function for that gene. Um, but let's look at this first. Yeah, the, I think the analysis probably will take very long because of there are a lot of people submitting job at the same time. Uh, but this is the result. I mean, if you um, do the analysis later, you succeeded in getting the result. Uh, it's like this. And at the top, you have the job summary. And uh, here you have the sub network. So yeah, if we go back to here, we see I mean, well, uh, basically um, um, this is our input gene list, right? And the network we chose the PPI biogrid. So this is a protein-protein interaction um, database. So basically, we are mapping these genes to a protein-protein interaction network, and then uh, first. First, we retrieved um, all the genes that uh, are included in the network, and then you get a sub network like this. And then you notice that in the top 10 genes, because of your parameter, is and you want to get the highlight the 10 genes, top 10 genes, right? Then these are the 10 genes that are highlighted, and then you can zoom in. And uh, it will tell you, I mean, for example, the FM1 and ELN, um, collagen A1, and TGF beta 1. I mean, these genes uh, are uh, the top genes based on the uh, network diffusion analysis. That means um, these are probably the hub genes or the have more connections to the other genes in this network than um, uh, the genes that was not selected as. Uh, uh, for highlighting. On the right side, so basically this is an enrichment uh, gene ontology analysis for the network. And uh, it will tell you uh, what are the enriched functions for these genes. And uh, you can click on this. For example, this is response to wounding. And then that those genes will be highlighted. So basically, it provides you a way to retrieve the network and also um, Pre, uh, understand what are the major functions associated with the network, and then you can also visualize uh, which genes in my network has that function. And uh, at the bottom, you have the, all the genes you submitted, and they'll rank like here. You can get all the rank like FN1 is the number one, and then uh, THBS1 is number two. Uh, but basically, you can have your complete list here. Yeah, here, um, uh, this is a gene ontology enrichment analysis result for the network. Um, you have, I mean, so basically, the typical gene ontology uh, over, -representation, uh, over representation analysis uh, report result, similar to the ORA analysis, but um, focusing on the genes uh, in the network and uh, using the gene ontology biological process for evaluation. So I mean, uh, these are the three I mean, major functions for the uh, web get start. So again, uh, the ORA and the NTA, um, the input are just gene lists. It's very easy. You can just copy and paste your list to here. But make sure you understand the 
uh, parameter setting and uh, get the right parameters and then uh, the result uh, is very um, simple to understand I think uh, you and uh, um, you can download the figures for uh, very easily from the interface. I hope today's session was useful to you where you got an idea about exploration of web g start result. So, we learnt that web g start gives you data of gene enrichment, gene ontology, protein protein interaction modules and pathway analysis. In pathway analysis we learnt that we can choose different functional database such as keg, reactome and wiki pathway. The filtering of pathway analyzed data can be done with stringent criteria such as 0.05 fast discovery rate. I hope you appreciate that resources like web g start are so precious open access available to the community where from your complex mass spectrometry or even NGS data set you can try to now further get an idea about what is the best biological sense of your data, how to really get the best biology out of that the complex mass spectra, how best now you can try to address the biological question which you originally wanted to start with. So, these resources are highly valuable of course, these short lectures and hands on sessions may not be able to provide you all the information, but more and more you make yourself familiar by using these tools you will then appreciate that the same data set which you have obtained from these high throughput technologies can now give you some very novel insight and probably the right answer to the biological question which you wanted to address. In the next lecture Dr. Bing Jiang will teach you about network analysis. Thank you.